Hi, so this is Francis from A Plus Tutoring. Now I'm going to solve one of the question in Stewart textbook for calculus two in chapter 5.2, number 25. Now use the form of the definition of the integral given in the theorem four to evaluate the integral. So what is the theorem four? Theorem four is basically this formula here using the limit summation here. So I'll call that limit definition for the integrals. Okay, so this is to evaluate the integral. So how do you write this integral into the limit form? Now first you need to know what is delta x, which is b minus a over n, right? b is the top one, a is the bottom one. And also you need to determine what is ci here, which is the right end point or the left end point. Okay, you can actually follow more about this in my course in calculus two, if you, you don't know what is these. But I'm sure that you learned that at school, the teacher has to mention this. Um, so this is ci equal to a plus i delta x. I'll be using right end point because I found that the formula is simpler. And this is also in my summary for calculus two. Okay, so you can take a look on these notes. Now, solving this problem. So I first need to find out what is delta x. Delta x is b minus a over n. But then what is b minus a? b is 1, a is 0 over n, so this is going to be 1 over n, right? So my delta x is 1 over n. Now if you look at my limit and summation, n approaching to infinity, summation i equals to 1 until n, f of ci times delta x, right? So this is my formula here. Well, I found out what is delta x now. I need to find out what is ci first. ci is a plus i times delta x. i is the variable. a is 0, right? This is a. And delta x is 1 over n. So I know that my ci, this is going to be i over n. Okay, so I have to replace i over n into my function here so that I can substitute into the summation. All right, so let's do that. Limit of n approaching to infinity, summation i equals to one until n. The function is x cubed. Whenever you see x, you have to replace it with ci. So I have i over n to the cube minus three times i over n to the square. Okay, all that times delta x, which is one over n. So this is what I need to evaluate using the definition of the integral, okay, given in theorem four. Now, how do I inter how do I evaluating this? So I have to separate into two part of the summation because I have two terms. The first term is right here, and second term is right here. I can actually multiply this into this. N is not the variable. The variable in this case is i i is my variable, n is a constant, so you can factor it out in the front. So let me recopy this limit on the other side. So this is limit of n approaching to infinity summation, i equals to one until n. And then I have my i over n cube minus three times i over n square all that times one over n right now i i want to separate this into two terms so i have limit n approaching to infinity so if i multiply this into that and this actually cubed it on both ends so i have my one over n to the fourth because i have n to the cube here times this one over n so i have n to the fourth right and then summation i equal to one until n, and then i cube. So this is my first term here. Subtracting three is a constant, n to the square times n, which is to the cube. So I have three over n cube, and then summation i equals to one until n. And then I have i square. Now how do I evaluate the summation, i cube and i square? I just need to look at my notes. I have my summation formulas right here, right? If it's i squared, I replace it with this formula. 
i cube, I will replace it with this formula. Okay, so let me, I'll be switching screen time to time. So to replace this formula is i cube, so I'll put it as this n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. So n squared times n plus 1 squared over 4. So let me double check that. So this is that. Now i squared, I have to replace it with this one. And then subtract 3 over n cubed. I will replace that with this equation now. n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. Okay. So n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 over 6. And let me double check that again one more time. Yeah, so that's good. Now, how do I evaluate this limit? Okay. The trick that I'll be using is just to look at the highest degree on the numerator and the highest degree at the denominator and compare. Okay. If you follow my course, you'll be able to understand what kind of tricks I'm using with limit and approaching to infinity. I repeat that in calculus one and also I do that in calculus two. It's much easier instead of multiplying everything else and then factorize all the highest power and then just all those things, right? I'm sure your teacher won't be forcing you to write down all the steps because that will be just way too long to solve. So now if you look at this here, the highest degree on the top is n squared times, well, this is n squared as well. At the bottom is n to the 4, so on top is n to the 4, and the bottom is also n to the 4. So I will just take the coefficient of each one because it's the same degree. So I take the coefficient of n to the 4th on top, which is 1, and the bottom is 4, so my limit on this term is going to be 1 over 4. So the next part is going to be 1 over 4 for the first term. Now, if I come back to the second term, the highest degree on top here is going to be n, n, and n. So I have a degree 3 here on top. At the bottom is also degree 3, so they have the same degree. So I'll just take the coefficient. Now the coefficient on top is 2 times 3 here, because that's, a, that's the coefficient of n cubed. Okay. If you don't believe me, you can multiply it out and find out what is the coefficient of n cubed, which is 6 on top here. And the bottom also is 6. So I have actually 6 over 6, which is 1. So minus 1. So that's basically my answer for the limit. If you simplify that, this is going to give you minus 3 over 4. Okay, And this is my answer for this question. For more information about the theory part of this equation, you can basically check out my website, goforaplus.com.